All right, the first property we get the opportunity to work with is the zero factor property. And like I alluded to earlier, pretty much what, it called, what it's called, that's what you're doing. In this one, we're going to set our equation equal to zero. Then we get the opportunity to factor. That's right, we get some factoring going on. Um, and then that's how we solve this. Now, if you struggle with factoring, there is a review assignment set up that you can go back and review some of your factoring. Factoring is considered a prerequisite information in order to get into this class. So if you struggle with your factoring, that's why I have those review assignments set up in there. Factoring is usually one of those F words, if you will, whenever it comes to math. It's usually factoring and fractions are the two doozies. You can totally do this. Just a little puzzle work. If you struggle with factoring, also, we have tutors here at MACC, and you can come and see me during my office hours. Either one of those things work. Cool. So let's do this thing. So the first example we get the opportunity to do is this one. Here we have a 6x squared plus 7x equals 3. Now, as the first word in my property alludes to, we want to set this guy equal to zero first. So in order to set it equal to zero, we're going to subtract three from both sides. That gives me a 6x squared plus 7x minus three equals zero. The second step, the second word, we get the opportunity to factor. Okay, the first rule of factoring is the greatest common factor. Do we have one in common here? Nope. And I see it's a squared term, a regular term, and a whole number. So we get the opportunity to break this down into two sets of parentheses. Now, there are multiple ways in order to factor a quadratic. I always use the FOIL method, so that's what I'm going to show. If you do the AC method, or the TP method, or whatever you want to call it, or the box method, any of those are fine. I don't care as long as you're mathematically correct. The factoring method with reverse FOIL is the most efficient way to come to your answer. However, as long as you're math correct, I don't care. Whatever works best for you. So typically whenever you factor, it's the two numbers that are closest together. So whenever I look at this 6, I think of 2 and 3. So I have a 2x and a 3x. I know with a minus in the back, my signs are going to be different. And I also noticed the fact that this is a 3. If you do not have a greatest common factor to begin with, you cannot have one in your parentheses. So I know the 3 has to go in front with the 2, and the 1 goes in the back. Now I want a positive 7. So I'm going to put a plus sign in the front and a minus sign in back, because if you go off to your side and check your outsides and insides, you get a negative 2x for you when you multiply your outside terms and a positive 9x when you multiply your inside terms. Voila, there's the 7x we want. Cool. The whole purpose of the zero factor property is to break it down. We want to break this down into two linear factors. Check. As soon as I have a plain x, we could solve this baby all day long. Set each one equal to zero. So 2x plus 3 equals zero, and 3x minus 1 equals zero. Then solve for x. So subtract 3 from both sides. Divide by 2, and x is a negative 3 halves. For the next one, add 1, divide by 3, and there you have it. Notice, how many answers do we have? 2. What's the highest exponent in my problem? 2. Not a coincidence, people. This is called the fundamental theorem of algebra. Whatever your highest degree in your problem is, that is how many answers you may have. So up to two answers. So that's really what you're looking for when you have your quadratics, is up to two answers. Cool. Let's do this thing. One type of problem people usually struggle with when it comes to zero factor property. So this is going to be example awesome. Because it is. Um, we have something like, well, oh, I don't know, 2x squared minus 4 or some crap, I don't know, is equal to 0. Now, whenever you solve this problem, what's the first rule of factoring? Oops, I meant to put a 4x. My bad, my bad, my bad. Um, 2x squared minus 4x equals 0. So what's the first rule of factoring? GCF. So when you're going through and you're 
working this out, the greatest common factor, your GCF, is your first rule of factoring. So notice there is a 2x in common, so we're going to factor that out, which leaves me with an x minus 2. Now with our zero factor property, you set every term that is factored equal to zero. So 2x equals zero and x minus 2 equals zero. So in the first one, you divide both sides by 2, x equals zero, because zero divided by think is zero. <clears throat> Pardon me. And when you add 2 to both sides, you get positive 2. Check it. How many answers do we have? 2. What's my highest exponent? 2. We got this thing.